Oh, man, that is the sound of every Eagles fan in the world right now. Disaster has struck. They're just drinking themselves to oblivion. drinking themselves silly on a play that didn't even count. Mm. So sad. It is now a Carson Wentzlisvania. <laughs> Pour one out for him. Uh, I would, but it's too delicious. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't care that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Carson Wentz seems like a good dude, although I do vehemently hate the Eagles. I'm from the area, and I just grew up in that fanhood, and they're a bunch of jamokes. <laughs> uh, so I switched uh, over to the 49ers when I was a young child, but my wife is an Eagles fan. She was legitimately, like, feelings were hurt. She mm-hmm. was sad. Yeah, like, that just... must have been terrible. I was out of town, so I didn't get to see that. I'm kind of glad I didn't. She was... Down in the dumps. Down so in the dumps. It was a, it was a bummer for her, a bummer for the Eagles. The Super Bowl Eagles, right, are now maybe just first round of the playoff Eagles. Yeah, nobody yeah. knows yet. So we'll cue Nick Foley and dynamite here. <laughs> uh, do Eagles have big talons? <laughs> He's pretty good looking, I guess. <laughs> He's a sledgehammer. <laughs> well, <we'll- laughs> <laughs> before we go to Wentzlisvania, um, or before we go to Nick Foley and Dynamite, the one thing I do like about, I mean, you don't like anything about the Car- Carson Wentz injury, but I think the fact that he got hurt making a play, diving into the end zone is better than he, you know, being rolled up on or something in the pocket. Mm-hmm. Like mentally, psychologically, he's going to make a play. He gets folded in half. He's diving into the end zone, just making a football play instead of, you know, worried about what happens next year. He comes back. He's standing in the pocket. Guys, oh, my God, get away from my knee. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I feel like if nothing else, looking forward, um, I think that's a good thing that it, the way it happened. Yeah, not, and, and, and sort of the timing. You know, you get you at least get some dry run here with Nick Foley and Dynamite. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can loop him, loop him up a little bit out. and see yeah. if you can't, you know, get too much chafing. Yeah. Um, but – Nick Foley and Dynamite has been, you know, or Nick Foles. Well, I'll stop calling him Nick Foley and Dynamite now. <laughs> Nick Foles has been in uh, in this position before. He's he's played some good football. Uh, so what are your realistic expectations of where this Eagles team can go, you know, playoff-wise? We'll see what happens kind of during the regular season, which is nice for them to have. But, you know, what's your expectations here? Well, I mean, they were losing that game when he came in. Um, I think it was more the defense and special teams that kind of brought him back. And uh, but I mean, he put together a couple drives, got him in scoring position. He looked comfortable when he was when he had time. I think they'll be able to lean on that defense and maybe a little bit more of the running game. But I mean, I think I think they can. They're not they're not going to miss the playoffs. But I'm, I mean, like you said, I don't know that I have much faith in them making them making it pretty deep into the playoffs. Well, I think we've seen solid defensive teams move through the playoffs with worse quarterbacks than Nick Foles. Like you said, I mean, I know it was Chip Kelly, and it was his first year really in the league, and what Nick Foles did when he went like 17 and one interception, 17 touchdowns for one interception for a half a year, whatever it was. Um, I, I He can play NFL football. They could be doing a lot worse in this time right now with a backup quarterback coming in. I think the Eagles have obviously built a really solid roster. They got really, really good – offensive lineman and they got seems to have just a stacked defense and they cause a lot of havoc i i mean it takes a lot of the air out of the balloon for the eagles and just for the nfc in general that was going to be just a really fun playoffs it still will be but i mean wentz was you know obviously yeah. he extends plays he's he, a big he's fun dude. to watch he's physical yeah you know, you can't ever count him out on on any sort of play. He can kind of make all the throws. And he's just, spreading. He was spreading the ball around to everybody. Obvious rising star. It's not news to anybody. He's just he was playing out of his mind for a second year quarterback. You know, just completely in charge of everything over there. And it's super sad. But I think the I think the Eagles still have a shot moving through some of the N- NFC because there's been very inconsistent. There've been some good teams, but you know, things happen. This. You, it's a battle of attrition. It always yeah. is. Anything can happen. If this team was in the AFC, I could see them getting maybe to the conference championship or something. But yeah, like the East and the NBA. Right. A little easier to get through. <laughs> right. Well, you know, they have – you guys mentioned the run game and all that stuff. They have, they've had a decent line. Peters got hurt. They've had a little bit of rotating uh, issues at, at guard here. I think last game they ended up playing like three different guards. Um but they're going to need to lean on this on this running game, I think, and and the defense is going to need to you know really really step up. Special teams going to have to be good. Uh, I guess my biggest question is is like, 
do you do you think that this defense do you think Nick Foles will do enough to keep this defense fresh enough to be as good as it needs to be? Um, I, I would think so out of the uh, you know the type of offense that they run um, comes from that Andy Reid type stuff it's West Coast exactly I, I feel like there's some there's some hey connect on some short passes you mentioned off air Jay Wayne that uh, you know Foles came in and locked on to Alshon a little bit they got playmakers if this had happened last year if Wentz was uh, obviously Wentz was a rookie last year but just go back to the offensive weapons that they had last year Foles will be a lot less set up to have right. a little bit of success. You know, they they poured it on with the wide receiver additions in the in the off season. Made a trade for a running back. Made uh, a trade I, for a huge I, running back. I really really like the undrafted rookie Clement. This in there right. doing work. You know, I think that he's got that they got he's got some talent around him to to keep keep it moving in the right direction. Just a little less. Uh, they got a three headed pretty. monster there in the backfield. I wouldn't say mom, maybe like two and a half headed because. I, I like Clement as well, but maybe he isn't established as a monster at this point. But Legarrett's, you know, always a, a tough bring down, and, yeah. and Ajay's still getting acclimated. But after you saw Wentz go down, you saw a little bit more of Ajay. Is that what you're expecting here? Just you know, I mean, a little like bit of a pound. You like it. to think so. Uh, he he's been coming on, getting more carries and snaps every week, really. And they they gave it to him a decent amount. I mean, they got up in that game uh, shortly after he came into the game, and you know, I think I don't know exactly defense how defense stood up well for them there. Sure, and then on the first play it was a bad snap, and Nick Foles calmly picked it up off the ground and scrambled for like eight yards. It looked good. It looked it looked Carson Wentz like you know, so he looked poised. I think he it's, it doesn't seem like it's too big for him. He's been there before. He has some familiarity with this team. You know, he was there. He was throwing. We you mentioned off air through through some pat, touchdown passes to Ertz a few years back. So he's got weapons. How about all right? So how about fantasy wise? And let's put a little fantasy spin mm. at the end of this little conversation here. Are you Alshon Aguilar? Any any reserves on firing those guys up for the next you know week or two in your fantasy playoffs here? If if I had to, I would. I'd still feel comfortable playing Alshon just based on him chucking him targets. He's he had several PPR points at the end of that game. Sure. I don't think I'd want to play Aguilar just want because. To. I just don't see the sustained drives that, 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 you know, I don't know about the big play ability either here. I, I could see him booming, but sure. he could also bust. bust. And I don't Agreed. think I'm ready to to do that at this point in time. Um, I You could find much worse RB2s than Jay Ajayi. And you could, I think you could still play Ertz. So I'm not, I, you yeah. got to temper expectations. And it's not like it's, these aren't your home run cuts here. Right. But they're your. You know, Alshon's been doing work all year, and, and so I'd Ertz. still fire him up. Yeah, I'm definitely the most comfortable with Ertz coming into this lineup here. I, I don't have any problem firing him up, and I'm pretty comfortable with Alshon as well. Um, but the, the running backs is where it gets, you know, I just I don't know who, what the usage is going to be like and how they're going to use guys or if they're just going to, you know, not be able to sustain drives and, you know, be get those running backs kind of out of the game, you know, over the next couple of weeks so I guess you'll kind of have to see I'd be like you said maybe if you were in a pickle and and it was you know you needed another running back to start like you know who who would be a good example who would you start Jay Ajay over this week like uh Latavius Murray would you start Latavius Murray or Jay Ajay this week right I'd go Murray yeah, I think you'd have to go Murray. What's cool here is like this is a really good example of why Dynasty is different than redraft and why it could be fun in another way because if you're playing redraft right now and you have JJ on your bench this week and he ends up going off, you're going to be really upset. If you have Dynasty League and you have JJ and he does work, you're going to be just happy to have that asset right. establish more value moving forward in this situation. But I, I wouldn't feel great putting any of these running backs in my lineup if I could if, if I could help it yeah obviously JJ comes first because he's top on the totem pole I mentioned Corey Clement just because I love him moving forward he for me he does a lot for me I, what I he he's even I know JJ hadn't been on the team for very long so this might play a part in it but Clement's on the field in third downs Clement's on the field in some red zone action I feel like Clement moving forward is a good piece um, but yeah, JJ is the one that everybody looks for right now. He's 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 lead back, and I'd be I'd be hesitant to start him if I had any better options. All right, so let's wrap this all up with um, Nick Foles. Would you start Nick Foles this week? In a, and let's just start with a single quarterback league. Nick Foles in a in a in a pinch here. 
Maybe you had a bad matchup or something. Nick Foles at really York. really startable in, at the Giants in a, in a in a one one quarterback league here this week. I, I would probably it's say a, no. No, it's a forty point spread right now. So those are, are the games over under? shy yeah. away here. Yeah, I'd rather not. Over so under, how about yeah. a, a two QB league? If I mean, especially at this point in the year, if you can find that second quarterback to feel good about, I mean, I don't see why Nick Foles couldn't be it. Right. Yeah. Sure. Nick right. Foles or Jimmy G. Oh, Jimmy G. Jimmy yeah. G. Yeah. Jimmy. Not even a question. Just had to get him in there. <laughs> Sorry, Nick Foles. Sorry, Eagles fans. 